back to JP's budget collecting and my weekly look back at the CBSI Hot Top 10 uh, from six months ago. Um, you know, we took last week off because CBSI took a week off. So we are back at it though this week and looking at the books that hit that Hot Top 10 list and trying to understand what made them hot at the time and whether or not they stayed hot and so that we can all make better decisions about which books to chase and which books to ignore. Um, going forward. So, stop. Um, the cat seems fired up and ready to go after missing out on interrupting me all last week. So, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, and number 10 on the list, uh, we had Conspiracy, the Illuminati, uh, the B cover. It was a Rosetto cover. Um, and this was just kind of a low print indie book. Had a lot of buzz around it. This was kind of a cool cover that people loved. And right out of the gate, it was going for $25. Um, but there's been no follow through on this series, really. I don't think there was but a couple of issues printed. Um, the story really didn't take off. Um, people just didn't really care about it going forward. Now this is a 2 to $5 book. Like, it's going for less than cover on eBay. Um, so this is one of those, you just never know sometimes with those hot indies. Um, we'll get to one later in the list that did take off and has continued to maintain because the story was good. Um, this one I think everybody jumped on because of this B cover and thought, well, if the story's good, then this B cover is going to be worth something. Well, the story didn't hold up to that and it is basically a all but already a dollar bin book. Um, and number nine on the list, we have uh, Black Order number one, the Inhuk Lee uh, 1 in 50 variant. And if you guys remember the Spider Gwen cover, here's Inhuk Lee at it again. Um, this was a, you know, a hot artist, um, a high number incentive of 1 in 50. Um, Black Order had a lot of buzz with Endgame and Infinity War and all the kind of the movie stuff, these characters being moved, or in the movies. Um, so then, out of the gate, uh, this was two weeks in. This book was going for $125 to $150 raw. Um, people were all over this one in 50. Um, now, not so much. There's only been a couple of recent sales, um, and they have been in the $50 to $75 range, which for a one in 50 incentive is still a pretty good, has maintained value pretty good because it's still going for above uh, ratio. So that's actually pretty good for a 1 in 50. Typically, they don't maintain a ratio or above, but it's definitely not going for that 125 to 150 range um, that was going for when it first came out. Um, now, asking price, it, now there hasn't been many sales uh, recently, but that's really because the asking prices are still mostly in that 100 plus range, even though it's really not, nobody's selling that, selling it for that. Um, on the 9.8 side, uh, or the slab side, there's only been one 9.8 sold, period. Uh, and somebody paid $437 for it. Um, seems a little steep to me, although currently there's a listing for $300. Um, and there's a couple others in that $350 to $400 range that are listed. Um, 9.6s are consistently going for around $75. Or, well, the most recent one went for $75, and they're going for basically $70 to $120. Is what a 9.6 goes for. Um, there's been a bunch of those sales, so I don't know if there was a little bit of an issue with this book. Um, there see, appears to be more 9.6s out there than 9.8s, which for a new book um, is a little surprising, but that just seems to be what the data is. Um, maybe it's because people are just asking too much for those 9.8s. Um, and number eight on the list, we have uh, Green Lantern, uh, number one, the local comic shop... Uh, Dang it, now I forgot what the damn, uh, oh, local comic shop day variant, <laughs> sorry, um, and basically this was a, uh, the, just the regular cover, only it was a foil cover, or a foil version of the regular cover, and it was limited to 500 of them total, um, and so these came out, it doesn't really say exactly what they were going for, just that they were super hot. And based on what I could find, it was that was really a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars is what these were going for right out of, off the bat. Um, now they're still going for fifty to a hundred. Um, although I say that, but there's only been one sale in May, and there were only three sales in April. 
and there's currently only three listed, but this is only a one in 500, there's only 500 of these total. So the fact that there's only three listed and there hasn't been many sales, uh, not super surprising. Now people are asking significantly more than what it's been selling for, um, or at least among the ones that are listed. Currently there's 130, one's listed for 130, 160, and 175. Um, just kind of a rare, there's a rare book, foil cover, but um, otherwise nothing really special about this book because um, it is the same cover as the regular, it's just the foil, and obviously there's only 500 of them, but, um, so that is number eight on our list, Green Lantern number one, uh, the local comic shop day variant. Um, number seven on our list is Black Hammer number one, um, and this was purely hit the list purely on option spec. It um, came out that it had been optioned. Um, so this book went from, you know, it, I think it was still a 10 to $15 book before that, jumped up to a $30 book. Um, the thing to remember with option news is that just means somebody has bought the rights to um, make something out of this. Doesn't mean they're going to. Um, but this one has been optioned. Um, now it comes. Now it's going for more in the fifteen to twenty-five dollar range uh, for raw copies, which is uh, still more than it was going for when it before it hit the list, but or before the option news, but less than what it was going for there. It peaked out around thirty. Um, so that's what it's going for for raw copies. Uh, Nine point eight. Like almost all the sales for nine point eight over the last couple of months have been in the seventy-five to one hundred dollar range. Although the most recent one jumped up to 150, and that could be because there's only three 9.8s currently listed, um, and they are 130, 150, and 180. So somebody paid a little more, but consistently this book has been a 75 to 100 dollar book for a 9.8 uh, over the last few months. At number six on the list, we have a book that I actually still have in my collection, but I also chased a little bit, and this is Batgirl. Um, Sorry, cat. Batgirl number 18, uh, one of those Middleton variants. Uh, this is Batgirl and Harley. Um, and this is a book that I think just because Batgirl was a little bit of a low print run early on before the Middleton hype train got going with 23. Um, so there's not a ton of these out there, um, but they are out there. Um, and basically what happened is what I think happens with a lot of these covers um, I found it for cover price the weekend after um, went on sale. It was going for thirty dollars then. Is what it was selling for when it hit the list. And I found two copies. I grabbed them. Um, I put them on eBay. I thought, all right, I'm gonna make money. Like that Saturday, I grabbed them and put them on eBay. And but the market flooded um, with these. There was a ton of them out there. All of a sudden. Went from not very many on the list, which is, or not many, very many listings to a bunch of listings. And this book immediately crashed from a $30 book down to like a $15 book. I ended up, it took a couple of weeks, but I ended up selling the two copies that I grabbed um, beyond the original copy I already had. And I sold those for um, 15 and 18 respectively, which I made a little money off of. Um, cover, you know, I made a little money off of them, but not near what it was going for. Um, now the book has dropped all the way back to, it's basically a five to $10 book. Occasionally I'll go for a little more than $10. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's a cool cover. I really like it. Um, but it's not really a book that has value. There's nothing key about this book. Um, it's just a Middleton cover. Um, it's a little bit lower print run because it was Batgirl for a B cover because it was really before people got onto the Middleton hype train with Batgirl. Um, so yeah, that is Batgirl number 18. Um, with that, we're going to jump into the top five on the list. Uh, and first up we have at number five, Dead Rabbit number one. And I don't know if you guys remember the story about Dead Rabbit. Um, first two issues came out. There was a lawsuit by a bar that had the name, had copyrighted the name Dead Rabbit. Um, they basically had to pull all these um, that were still in the comic shops. They had a recall on it. And people kind of went crazy like, oh, this is going to be a big, valuable book. Well, right off the bat, it was going, or right after this happened, regular covers were going for $15 to $20. The 1 in 10 variant was going for $35 to $40. Um, but the thing was, there was still, 
a bunch of these out there because the, the recall didn't really happen until after number two had come out. So most of them had been sold, had been moved around. So there's still a bunch of them out in the community despite the recall. And there really doesn't seem to be much hype maintaining for this, even though from all reports, it was a good story. Um, it's back down to basically, you can get both covers. You could buy both covers, like, so the pair, or you can buy one and issue two, the pair, like, typically seems to be how they're selling one of those two pairs for five to $15. Um, and basically a nine, eight of the main cover is going for 40 to 60. Um, a nine, eight of the one in 10 went, was going back in February, January for around 120. It's down to 70 at this point. Um, so yeah. And oh, I got so yeah, so that is basically where we're looking at on Dead Rabbit. It's basically, there was a lot of momentum around the book after the recall, but the fact of the matter was they were, most of them were out there. Most of them didn't, act, not that many books actually went back um, because it was so much later after it originally happened. Um, so it is a recalled book. They haven't made any more of them. I don't know that it's going to have much staying power because there's no story to really hook people to really want it um, other than, oh, it was this recalled book. And... I don't know how much staying power that really has. It doesn't appear to have much. Um, and number four on the list, we have a hot, in not incentive, but a hot uh, indie book title that has maintained its momentum. Um, it is Middle West number one, and this is the Scotty Young 1 in 20 incentive. And Middle West was a hot story right off the bat. It has continued to be hot. Um, people are really enjoying it. I would say it would be the indie book of the moment if it wasn't for Die. Um, I think Die has stolen some of Middle West Thunder, but it's still really good. People still really like it. Um, was a relatively low print, I think, especially on this 1 in 20. Um, then, week of release, this 1 in 20 incentive was going for $60. Um, there's not many sales going on right now. Um, raw copies, there's only been... Uh, let's see... Two raw copies sold recently, uh, one in March, which went for $50, and one in May, which went for $140. So a uh, big difference between those two, but really it's because there's not, I can't even find any raws uh, listed on eBay. Um, it's hard to find a raw copy of this that's still out there and floating around. So it's jumped all the way up to 140 with the last sale because people can't find it. Um, there are... The only 9.8 sale, the only other sale I could find in the last three months was in April, and that was a 9.8, and it sold for $300. Um, currently, there's only two copies of this book listed on eBay. Um, the first is listed for $333 for 9.8, and the second one is listed for $575. So people are trying to, seeing how far they can push it a little bit, but there's not many of these out there anymore. Um, People have grabbed them and they're holding them for the most part. Um, so we're way into the list and I just realized I forgot to do my usual caveat of telling you guys when this information was uh, most relevant. Um, I might put it probably at the beginning. It'll be in a little note that says when it was, but I recorded this on uh, what is today? Thursday, uh, the 23rd of May. Um, and this list is from, I didn't say the list or anything, um, out of practice after one week. And then the list is from, uh, November 23rd, 2018. So, um, I'll probably put that back at the beginning underneath. So when you get to this part, you will have already seen that, but, um, just a little mistake on my part. Uh, next up we have number three on the list. And this is a book I re if you've watched my recent collecting smart, uh, the boy who had seven and I talked quite a bit about, and that is Immortal Hulk number two. Uh, first appearance of Dr. Fry, and this is a book, another book that kind of kept going. Um, Immortal Hulk has been a super popular series. It's been really good. People are loving Al Ewing's writing and his take on the Hulk. And this number two issue is really being driven by this first appearance of Dr. Fry that is a character from the TV show, uh, back in the day, but who never appeared in the comics until now. Um, back then, in uh, November, it was going for 20 to $30, which is when I sold my copy for about $30 and thought, I did good. Um, actually, I went into the comic shop, and this was the opposite of the Batgirl uh, 
18, I went into the comic shop and found a, two copies of 18, one copy of number two. Tried to sell them all. Um, this one went quick, went for 30 bucks, and I thought, I did fantastic. Um, now this is still a 70 to $80 book <laughs> um, with 9.8 going for around $300. Um, the 1 in 25 uh, Zafino cover raw is going for 225 to 300 um, and 9.8 of that peaked about a month ago at around a thousand dollars but now are back down to the five to six hundred dollar range um, so that is uh, Immortal Hulk number two if you wanted to hear any more of my thoughts on the staying power of Dr. Fry, uh, go check out my Collecting Smart video that I did with The Boy at Seven. Um, at number two on the list, we have um, the Key Collector app. Well, not really. Uh, we have Marvel uh, 75th Anniversary Celebration number one. And basically, I say the Key Collector app because this hit the list because he put out an alert saying this was Stan Lee's last work. And uh, people jumped all over this book. Um, it went from cover price to $50 basically overnight. And following Stan's passing. Um, since then, it has fallen all the way back down to a $15 book. So there's still some interest in the book. Um, and nine, But 9 eights are only going for... The two 9 eight sales went for 42 and 49 um, Really no staying power to this book at all. It really just peaked because there, people got an alert. Um, so that is number two on the list, Marvel 75th anniversary celebration number one. And last but not least was a little bit interesting this week and it was Stan Lee signature books. And the reason they put this on the list is over 800 of these sold on eBay, um, in a week after his death. And there was just a huge demand. They were going for big prices and people wanted to get their Stan Lee signature. Um, and it's obviously slowed down, but there is still a high demand for Stanley signatures here now, even this much later. Um, basically, I look back at the last couple of weeks and average in eight to ten Stanley signature slab Stanley yellow label signatures selling a day, um, and thirty to forty on weekend days. So Saturdays and Sundays usually about thirty to forty of these go. Um, weekdays there's about ten. Um, there's still a high demand for these. They're still demanding somewhere 100 to more, depending on the book, um, just for his signature over the value of a regular, whatever the grade is of that book. Um, it's adding about $100. Um, so still high demand for Stan's signature because there's not going to be any more of them, um, and people love Stan. So that is this week's list. Um, Really had an indie that really has done well in Middle West. A couple of indies that haven't done so much. Some option news that didn't really mean much. Uh, a hot cover that flooded the market after it hit the list. Um, and the Immortal Hulk number two that just keeps chugging along. I feel like there's a bubble there, but so far it is that bubble's pretty tough. So um, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next time. Bye.